You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today, Diana Kouris. Uh, she has a book that's a finalist for the High Plains Book Festival. Uh, it's called Nighthawk Rising. And we're going to talk about the book in a minute, but maybe first, Diana, you could tell us a little about yourself. Sure. Well, first, I want to say I'm so honored to have my book chosen as a finalist. It's truly thrilling, and my deepest appreciation to all involved with the High Plains Book Awards and also to the House of Books for conducting this interview. Thank you. Um, my husband, Mike, and I live in the central part of Wyoming in an area that lies between the Owl Creek Mountains and the Wind River Mountains. And the serenity of our country home is a blessing to creativity. My aspiration to become an historian and nonfiction writer likely formed its roots while I was growing up on my family's cattle ranch in a charismatic valley known as Browns Park. The valley lies along the famed Outlaw Trail where Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah converge. I am so glad that at the turn of the last century, my mother's parents chose to drive their covered wagon west to this remote and rugged country to raise their children and build a cattle ranch. How lucky was I that a spellbinding hist spell history of outlaws, Native Americans, pioneers, posses, and cowhands encircled me in my youth. My history-loving mother swept me in, into the past time and again as she recounted some of our valley's historical events. The very ranch where we lived had once been home to Butch Cassidy and later served as a hideout sanctuary for him and others. Outlaw horses had grazed in the same pastures where our saddle horses grazed. Remnants of the Old West were commonplace in Browns Park. When my mother passed away before fulfilling her dream of writing the history of our beloved valley, she gifted her passion to me. Researching and writing the history of the area became my life's work. I've authored three nonfiction books, including The Romantic and Notorious History of Browns Park, my memoir, which was also a finalist for the High Plains Book Awards, Writing the Edge of an Era, Growing Up Cowboy on the Outlaw Trail, and, <clears throat> excuse me, my latest book, Nighthawk Rising, a biography of accused cattle wrestler, Queen Anne Bassett of Browns Park. Well, tell us about the book. I'm, I'm curious about uh, Anne Bassett. I, I, I'm not familiar with her. She uh, apparently had quite a reputation. And then you did some research and found maybe reality wasn't quite what a reputation had said. What was her reputation? It was actually far more interesting. <laughs> yes, Nighthawk Rising follows the life journey of a really complex and beautifully elegant Browns Park cowgirl, Queen Ann Bassett. It is a true story of the American West and an inquiry into what is arguably the most fascinating era in the settling of the Rocky Mountains. And this book provides a large collection of brand new research and many never before seen photographs, especially of Van Bassett. I had a really unique perspective while writing this book. My grandmother and Ann Bassett became friends when both women were in their 20s. My elderly uncle talked to me at length about the cattlewoman Queen Anne, whom he loved and admired from the time he first saw her when he was just five years old. I've long known that most of what has been written about Anne throughout the years was not based in fact. One morning, I was standing in front of my desk looking at some historical Browns Park photos, and I heard her whisper to me and asked me to write her story. Kind of makes me tear up to think about it. 
those whispers sent me on a seven year journey of really intense research and writing that ended with the publication of Nighthawk Rising. Ann Bassett was born in, a, in 1878 in a one room windowless log cabin just across the Green River from the ranch house where I grew up. Although our ages were seven decades apart, we rode the same trails, breathed the same ancient fragrances, and admired the stately mountains that surrounded us. And each of us formed a selfish love for our valley home. At dusk, after long days in the saddle, we were both escorted home by the grace of night hawks flying overhead. So I wrote Ann Bassett's story and about her surroundings from intimate knowledge. Lightly freckled with dark red hair, Ann Bassett was a branding irons, grizzlies, and drifting trail dust. Together, she and her valley were romanced by wild horses, cattle herds, shaps, and big hats. As soon as she was old enough to sit in the saddle, she went into training to become a top hand. Her life on the ranch was filled with adventure, such as the time she roped a grizzly cub and was nearly killed in the process. Anne and her family lived in the turbulence of Native American conflict, range war, and bad men on the run. Anne knew Butch Cassidy and his partner Elsie Lay as friends. However, stock detective, outlaw hunter, and hired assassin Tom Horn infiltrated her life and crushed the future she thought she knew. Ann Bassett was destined to ride into legend as queen of the cattle rustlers. She was arrested at the point of a shotgun and twice tried for cattle rustling. She lived a multi-layered life of great wonder and challenge. And about herself growing up in the wilds of the West, she said, I was a mangy coyote and loved it. So she she had a, a reputation as a cattle rustler. Was this uh, was this just a manufactured uh, reputation, or I mean, was there any justification? No, yeah. no, and the book goes through the entire event of how that all came about, and she was arrested and tried, and she probably was guilty. Uh, I think the reader can decide that. It's all laid out, the entire uh, event, how it played out in the, in, and, and the conclusion of her being found not guilty. But she herself said, uh, I was guilty of the things that they accused me of and more. <laughs> but, <laughs> so anyway, but the entire event and her trials are in the book. Okay. Well, who, who do you think would uh, enjoy reading this book? What's the audience? Okay, well, writing the lives of those who came before is an awesome responsibility, and I, I take it most seriously. And there's a factual history to be told, but I've always felt that there is also an emotional history to be discovered and revealed. And in order to tell the full story of their individual lives. Thoroughly researched and meticulously documented, this book is not only a valuable resource for researchers, it is meant for every reader who wishes to be transported into an enthralling narrative of the American West that has been written with depth and truth. When I write, I always feel an innermost connection with not only the people I'm writing about, but also with those who will one day read the words that I am writing. Even when I'm lost in the pursuit of perfecting a phrase, a page, a chapter, I never lose my sense of that reader. I feel a kinship with them and I'm honored by their presence. I'm thrilled that in addition to Nighthawk Rising being a finalist for the High Plains Book Awards, it has won the 
2020 Western Writers of America Spur Award. The yeah, Wyoming some, State has getting some break up there. Um, I think it started when you were saying, I am thrilled that in addition to, maybe you could pick up from there again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm thrilled that in addition to Nighthawk Rising being a finalist for the High Plains Book Awards, it has won the 2020 Western Writers of America Spur Award, the Wyoming State Historical Award, and was selected as a finalist for the Colorado Book Awards. I feel beyond blessed. Again, I thank you High Plains Book Awards and House of Books for this amazing honor and opportunity. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We've, uh, we're really looking forward to it. So uh, um, best of luck and we, we hope to see you in Billings. Uh, you know, uh, maybe next time you're up this way, you can give us a call. That would be yeah. wonderful. Yes, I wish we could be all, all of us be together for this wonderful event, for sure. Very much. Thank you for, for everything. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> this program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.